Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Difference Maker here coming to you live from the Dallas Cowboys studio slash office. Got some children in the background, so uh, try your best to hear with the noise. I do apologize for that. Seems like I always got children around. Love kids. Kids are great and they're a blessing from the Lord. And they're just having fun over there in the other room. Also, too, finishing up my coffee here with a good kind of vanilla creamer. I like that. Don't drink coffee too much, but um, when I do and when it's brewing, I will have some. So last time, um, we talked about the different um, ways that uh, Jesus uh, interpreted the Old Testament and then how the apostles interpreted the Old Testament. And then we you're discussing the, the early church fathers. Uh, we mentioned um, the Alexandrian school, the uh, allegorists and that. That's the epistle of Barnabas. And um, Justin, now we're at Justin Martyr, who was from um, 100 A.D. to 164 A.D. Now, Justin said the Old Testament is relevant to Christians by means of allegoriz- allegorizing. He wrote, for example, that Leah, Leah represents the Jews, Rachel is the church, and Jacob is Christ who serves both. When Aaron and Hur held up Moses' hands, that represents the cross. We also have a Pente, 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 Pantanus, Pantanus. Uh, from uh, AD 180, he said that the teacher of the school of Alexandria was the first to adopt the allegorical method of interpretation. Also, Irenaeus of Smyrna and Loins in 132 to uh, 100 AD taught that Christ is the heart of the scriptures and that unclear passages are to be interpreted by clear ones. In opposing the Gnostics against heresies, um, and their fanciful interpretations, he stressed that the Bible is to be understood in its na- its obvious natural sense. Also, some of the early church fathers and their views of interpretation, we have Clement of Alexandria. He believed in the five senses to scripture, historical, doctrinal, prophetic, physolo- ph- philosophical, and mystical. Clement taught that all scripture speaks in a a mysterious language of symbols, and that's from Roy B. Zuck's uh, Basic Bible Interpretation, page 35. Example, he took the two fish Jesus used to feed the 5,000 to represent Greek philosophy, uh, and then he took the Mosaic Law prohibitions against eating swine, hawks, and eagles, and ravens in Leviticus, Leviticus 11, 7, and verses uh, 13 through 19 as well to represent respectively unclean lust for food, injustice, robbery, and greed. You see how just off that is? See, you can come up with anything when you allegorize it. You can make up your interpretations any way you choose. That's why you must have proper hermeneutics. Because then you're giving people anything and you're not really giving them what God says. There was also Tertullian of Carthage, um, Origen, and um, Augustine. Now let's see what Augustine believed. Augustine modified allegorism by confining it to the prophetic scriptures. That is, he interpreted the non-prophetic scriptures literally and the prophetic scriptures allegorically. In his work on Christian doctrine, De De Doctrina Christiana, written in uh, 397, Augustine developed the principle of the analogy of faith by which he meant that no interpretation is acceptable if it is contrary to the general tenure of the rest of Scripture. He held to a fourfold interpretation of Scripture, historical, Iatiological, analogical, and allegorical. And yet, he stressed two, only two meanings the signum, um, which means the sign, and the rest, the thing. 
Uh, one of his famous poems here is the letter shows us what God and our fathers did. The allegory shows us where our faith is hid. The moral meaning gives us rule of daily life. The energy shows us where we end our strife. Also, Augustine is known to be the father of amillennialism. Uh, he is best known among students of prophecy as the father of amillennialism. His view of the millennium was incorporated into Roman Catholic theology. Augustine rejected the literal millennium as too materialistic and carnal and taught that the millennium is to be interpreted spiritually as fulfilled in the Christian church. He also views 2 Corinthians 3, um, verse 6. Um, he justified the allegorical interpretation by a gross interpretation of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. All right, um, sorry I had to uh, pause for a minute. Things are getting a little bit out of control, but they're back now uh, in control. Kids are out there playing again. Anyway, I was talking about the abuse of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, when speaking of Augustine, um, the father of amillennialism. And I said that he had said that he justified the allegorical interpretation by a gross interpretation of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. He made it to mean that the spiritual or allegorical interpretation was the real meaning of the Bible. The literal interpretation kills. For this experimental reason, Augustine could hardly part with the allegorical method. In the fall of the fig leaves, he, uh, he said that they were hypocrisy. The covering of the skin is mortality and the four rivers of four cardinal virtues. And the four rivers are four cardinal virtues, excuse me. Noah's drunkenness represents Christ in his suffering and death. The teeth of the Shalut Shalomite in Song of Solomon 4 2 are the church tearing men away from heresy. This is what Augustine said, and you see how dangerous allegorization is. Now Jerome and from uh, 347 to 419 A.D. said originally followed the origin of, in his allegorizing. Later he became more literal though. He still held to a deeper meaning of scripture. It becomes clear from these late church fathers that Jerome and Augustine paved the way for two emphases that were to endure more than a thousand years. Allegorization and church authority. Now, here's the second school, the uh, Anto <laughs> Antioch, I can't say this word, but it's Antiochian school, the literalists is what they are. Sensing the rampant disregard for the literal meaning of scriptures in the Alexandrian fathers, several church leaders in Antioch of Syria emphasized historical literal interpretation. This school of interpreters stood like a Gib Gib Gibraltar amidst a shifting sea of allegorism. The exegetical principles of Anto Antonician, um, Antiochian uh, school laid the groundwork for modern evangelical hermeneutics. They approached the Bible with the literal historical method of interpretation and they stressed the study of Hebrew and Greek and wrote commentaries. Now a couple of these men were Dorotheus, um, Lucian who died in 1312, uh, 312 I'm sorry, the founder of the school at Antioch, um, Diodorus, Di Diodorus um, he wrote what is the difference between theory and allegory. Uh, Theodore of Ma Mopsustia, um, the greatest interpreter of the of this school, he wrote on uh, he wrote on allegory and history against origin, and asked if Adam were not really Adam, how did the did death enter the human race? 
He was, he was also called the Prince of Ancient Exegetes. They also have Gon Chrysostom um, from 354 to 407. He was the greatest expositor of the early church era. Chrysostom uh, John is unquestionably the greatest commentator among the early fathers of the church. His works contain about 7,000 quotations from Old Testament and about 11,000 from the New. He wrote commentaries and most of the Old Testament books uh, on most of the Old Testament books and on the epistles of Paul. He also had Theodoret from 386 to 458 um, AD. Now what happened to the school uh, of Antioch? Unfortunately one of the students of the school, Nestorius, um, became involved in a major heresy concerning the person of Christ. This association with the school together with other historical circumstances led to the eventual demise of this pro promising school of thought. The hermeneutical historian Farrar sighs over the demise of the school saying, unhappily for the church, unhappily for the real apprehension of scripture, the allegorists in spite of protests were completely victorious. The school of Antioch was discredited, discredited by anathemas. Now, what happened during the Middle Ages from 500 to 1500 uh, AD? Um, little or original scholarship was done during the Middle Ages. Most students of the scripture devoted themselves to studying and compiling the works of the early fathers. Interpretation was bound by tradition and the allegorical method was prominent. Also in the Middle Ages was a vast desert so far as the biblical interpretation is concerned. There was no fresh creative type thinking about the, the scriptures themselves. Well, let's understand this from a fourfold sense of Augustine's fourfold sense of scripture became the norm for biblical interpretation. This was literal allegor allegory, moral, and anago anagogy. An example of this was in Jerusalem, where the city of Jerusalem can be used to illustrate this idea. Literally, Jerusalem refers to the historical city itself. Allegorically, it refers to the Church of Christ. Morally, it indicates the human soul and 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 anagically or estiologically um, it points to the heavenly Jerusalem. Another one is uh, you can use an example is Genesis 1 3. What was the church's role in interpreting the Bible during this period? Well of the Middle Ages. During this period the principle was generally accepted that any interpretation of the biblical text must adapt itself to the tradition and doctrine of the church. The source of dogmatic theology was not the Bible alone, but the Bible as an interpreted by church tradition. Well, basically all this was saying is that during this period of time they just interpreted based on the traditions that the church had followed. No one was really investigating to her at this time. He had some important figures which I'm going to name. Gregory the Great, uh, Venerable uh, Betty, B Day. I don't, I, and I apologize if I say these names incorrectly. Uh, the Calibus in Europe and Palestine in the late me medieval times. Um, Stefan L L Langton, Thomas Aquinas, the Victorians, Nicholas of Lyra, and of course you know John Wycliffe. Now he wrote that all things necessary in scripture